Well, in this chat, I'm here with my good friend, Glenn Dewis, to talk about his classes for the upcoming Photoshop Virtual Summit 4. Thanks for popping on, Glenn. I appreciate it. Not at all. You're welcome. So one of the classes that you uh, are teaching is to do with landscape photography. And I know that for recently, you've sort of, uh, seems like my impression, at least you've fallen in love with the world of landscape photography. <laughs> so tell us a bit about that and the class that you're going to be teaching. Yeah, it, it, entirely motivated by the pandemic, Dave. It was a case of <laughs> being a uh, portrait photographer, as you know, and then the, the pandemic kicks in. You can't take portraits. And that combined with then relocating from where we lived before down to the southwest of England on the coast. And you think, well, there's, there's only one thing I can do, really, which, mm -hmm. you know, get out, enjoy the uh, outdoors and see if I can get some pictures of it. And it was and it, and it still is purely done just for the fun of it. I don't intend to move over to being known as a landscape photographer. Far from it. It's, it is purely for the enjoyment of it. And I. I, as you say, I literally have fallen in love with it. I really, really do love it. And it's a totally different mindset because whereas before, you know, taking portraits, as I still am, obviously, now that we can, um, when I go out to do a portrait, I know I'm going to come back with a result. Whereas with a landscape, I don't know if I'm going to get a result and I don't really care. It doesn't matter. Do you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it's just great being out and about and probably appreciate that more than we did before we had all the restrictions kick in. So yeah, I, I really do love it. Great. So what, what uh, specific kind well, give us an idea, at least an overview of the kind of things you're going to be talking about in your class. Um, well, it's kind of uh, the, the things I, I wanted to kind of go through in the class were it was, it was stuff that you maybe couldn't do at the time of the photo shoot or maybe wished you had done. Uh, and then some other things which uh, are going to really help as a landscape photographer. So couple of examples things that i'm i have really fallen in love with long exposure so there's a there's a couple of things on to do with long exposure that you can apply to your images after but also it might be that you go out with some kit occasionally let's say if you go out with your your partner or you just want to go for a stroll with your camera you don't want to take loads of kit with you you take minimal kit which is probably just your camera how can you recreate a long exposure there's ways you can do it at the time even not having a neutral density filter with you. It is insane. I have literally sat here doing this stuff. And in fact, today <laughs> I went out to see if the technique that I've covered in the class could be done using a drone. Because ordinarily with a drone, you know, even though they're steady in the air, a bit of breeze will knock it about a bit and you're probably limited to maybe one or maximum two second exposures. I, I reckon I can get up to a 15 second exposure now with a drone using this technique. And it is just... Wow. I, I have giggled. And then there's that <laughs> technique then kind of rolls into another technique where you might find yourself going to a really, you know, beautiful location. Maybe you've, you've planned it, uh, that you're going to go out and do a bit of a hike and you get there and it's just inundated with people. Or maybe you're out and about with your partner or whatever and you see a great place. and you think, I'd love to take a picture of that, but it's just too busy. Just the most stupidly easy way that you can get rid of everybody there without it involving things like the clone stamp tool and whatever. It's just phenomenal. This one mm -hmm. technique, which can give you so many different things, removing people, long exposure, and it's just phenomenal. So there's that, awesome. fixing perspectives. Um, and yeah, just some other little kind of little tips and tricks in there as well, which although it's great to be able to do them in camera, because that's one thing I've really changed with this, I used to be very Photoshop orientated, whereas now it's, it's almost like a bit of a pride when you can do it on location and come back with it, you know, which is why I'm using filters and stuff. But there are occasions when maybe you can't. Um, there's some things in there that are going to show you how you can make it look like you did anyway. So, nice. yeah, I'm, I'm and this is all stuff I've never recorded anywhere ever before. So I'm really proud of that to be able to That's sort of great. release it for the first time with the for the summit. So Fantastic. Now, your other class is sort of going back to the other situation where it's to do with uh, when you have lighting, but not necessarily a full kit of lights, just uh, a light. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I've kind of I've shown stuff before. I know that in a, in a previous summit, there was a class where I showed some little things you can do with introducing fake lighting into your scenes and stuff like that. That's not what this class is. This class is um it kind of fits for everybody, really, I guess, because it's it's all about using one single light during a photo shoot, but being able to make it look as if you used more. 
Mm. And I actually say in the intro that this is, I, in fact, no, I, I cut that bit out because I thought, no, I can't put that. I actually said in the <laughs> intro that it is laughably easy. It is just <laughs> laughably easy how this works, but that doesn't take away how damn effective it is. It really is mm -hmm. because, I mean, in the example, I go through two particular photo shoots. One was outdoors photographing a guy, uh, photographing a guy on, a, on a Harley Davidson on an incredibly sunny day. So obviously then you're limited with the power of the flash overpowering the sun. And then you have to use things like high speed sync. And then because you're using that, it's got to be in closer. So what do you do? So that's how this technique fixes that problem. But then also uh, photographing a car, there's a vintage Porsche. And I photographed some other cars in the past and I am not a car photographer, but if I get the opportunity to photograph a really nice car, heck I'll do it because it's just, <laughs> you know, when you've not got a portrait to do or maybe not doing a landscape, I want to keep the camera in my hand. And I first of all got a camera because I just love doing taking photos. So I'll go out and do it. But, I, but like I said, I'm not a car photographer and I wouldn't have the elaborate studio setups or all those special rigs that they'll use, which costs a heck of a lot of money just using one light. And it could even be just a speed light. I show how you nice. can light the car. And it, again, just so easy, but so effective. And I, I've just, I think it give, it's given me the confidence to say to somebody, look, if you've got a decent car, let's get out, let's photograph it. Hmm. It's given me the confidence to do it and not look an idiot because I know I won't get a result. <laughs> I know I can get a result. So. Sure. Well, that's fantastic. And I love, I love in particular the fact that you said that it's, you know, it's simple, but effective because yeah. sometimes people equate like, well, if it's, if it's too easy, it really can't be that good. You know, Absolutely, it's one yeah, or the yeah. other, but it's, it's great when it's a technique that's not hard to do, but gives great results. I think that's the way we all, we all can get, isn't it really? That if something is easy, then it's not as effective. We're always thinking it's got to be harder than that. <laughs> and I think that it's just a whole different mindset. It doesn't have to be that hard. Do you know what I mean? To be, to be yeah. really effective and heck, if, if there's an easy way of doing stuff, I'll do it. As long as I get the result I want, then, yeah. then I'll do yeah. it. So it kind of reminds me of years ago. I was having a discussion with someone who was asking about. They were uh, looking for some advanced techniques, and I said, well, "What do you mean by advanced?" And he said, "Well, yeah. something that's difficult and takes a long time." And I was like, "Wait, you you want to see a technique that's going to be take a long time and is challenging? Like that doesn't seem to make sense to me." It's like, yeah, if, yeah, yeah. if I if I could show you a way that was fast and and the, you know, effective, wouldn't that be advanced too? <laughs> I, didn't, yeah, you know, I didn't quite understand the, that philosophy of, you know, I'm an advanced user, so I want something that's going to really challenge me. It's like, yeah. Okay. My, my goal <laughs> with, I think my goal, Dave, with both of these classes, because, because both of them, they are both contents that I've never recorded. And I want, I want people to be able to kind of, to, to watch it and go, God, he made that look easy, but then mm. then do it and go, God, it was easy. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that, that's what I yeah. want from this. So, um, nice. yeah, it's it's nice when you can do something fresh, something something new. And I, I'm I'm looking forward to sort of getting some good feedback on it because I want people to get yeah, some good fantastic. results with it. That's great. And I'm gonna sound like a broken record to anyone who's watched all these interviews because I think every single time having chatted with the instructor, I'm like, well, I can't wait to watch your classes. But <laughs> <laughs> it's it's true again. I mean, because and uh, particularly as we said, like techniques that are not difficult to understand, but yet give yeah. great results. That's sort of the, that's like the Photoshop dream, isn't it? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, Glenn, I appreciate you taking the time to chat about your classes. I'm sure everyone will agree that they sound really interesting. Can't wait to see them. Good stuff. Looking forward to it. Thanks very much. All right. Thanks, Glenn.